Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Dark House Films, the show dedicated to teach you how to do amazing visual effects and film techniques with low budgets. Today, we're going to be doing this. In today's episode, we will be using Trap Code Mirror. However, if you do not have Trap Code Mirror, I will be providing a link, which is in the description below. Go ahead and download that package. It has four different elements, four elements that you're going to use for your own production. Feel free to use them and apply them wherever you want. They're royalty free, they're created by me, and uh, they're free for a download. Go ahead and grab a copy. All right, so let's get to it. We're gonna create a new 10 second comp. Control Y to create a new layer. We're gonna call it B, apply trap border mirror. We're gonna add 10 vertices on X and 461 vertices on Y. Size, same as our comp, 1920 by 1080. We're gonna change the fractal type to multi. Change your amplitude to 223 and your frequency to 167. Complexity one, octave scale at zero, and octave mold at zero. Smooth normals, turn it to 40. Now go to your shader, normal effect, go to 99, multi-sample, 61. Now your material, set your color to black, Change your opacity to 20. And go to your repeater. Set your instances to 10. Change the repeater opacity to 20. Now shut it off. Control D to duplicate it and name it M. Now on this one, go to your geometry. Change your vertices on X to 1000, vertices on Y to 500 same size and your fractal change your amplitude to 82 and your frequency to 450 all right control d to duplicate it and let's name this one s shut the first one off go to your fractal change your amplitude to 46 and your frequency to 860 Okay, so we're gonna duplicate this one more time and name this XS. Change your amplitude to 29 and your frequency 1421. All right, and there we have it, all four elements. Now on each one, go ahead and open your fractal menu and keyframe your evolution at zero on your first frame and go to your last frame and change that to 350 and you'll be getting a movement like this and repeat the same step to all to all the layers okay so now let's bring our two video elements into a new comp and uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to try to adjust a uh, a frame where both chairs are aligned in the same position and i think for me this works However, there's a slight movement in the camera there. Uh, I don't know if you guys catch it, but we'll take care of that later. Okay, so now we're gonna use our rotor brush tool and we're just gonna mask our subject out. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's, uh, it's basically just to apply a few effects there. Also, we're gonna change our uh, comp settings to 24 frames per second, which is gonna make this effect look better and uh, it's gonna make it easier for us. So we're gonna rotor brush it and uh, Basically, we're just gonna let this thing do its uh, its own. It did give me a little bit of problems, but nothing that can be handled. So we're gonna create a new solid. We're gonna name it Shadow, and we're gonna draw a mask uh, around our subject where it's supposed to be, and uh, feather out around 100 pixels. Okay, so now we're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna name it Fractal and add a Fractal Noise. Change the Fractal Type to Dynamic. 
the contrast at 145, brightness at minus 30, complexity go to 5, and invert it. Change the blending mode to screen. Now your actual layer also change the blending mode to screen. Now uh, create a mask around uh, the subject or the same areas that we masked out with the road brush tool and feather them out each one around 20 pixels. So um, these are going to be visible on the first frame which is where we are right now. So set a keyframe, go back and set the opacity to zero. Now uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to play around with these masks so they can animate uh, within those five or six frames and change the position, the movement, and the, the scale and whatnot. Okay. And just so where you guys feel comfortable. You can, you will barely be able to see these, so um, it's uh, it, it, it doesn't need to be perfect. Again, it's just to give it uh, a, a, a more smooth transition. So we're going to pre-compose this this layer, we're going to name, rename it Com to Vanish, change the turbulent displacement, we're going to keyframe it at zero at the first frame. And on our last frame, we're going to change the amount to 100, change the size to 10, and the complexity to 8.2. Now we'll go ahead to your effects and presets and look for the directional blur. Apply it to the same comp. Go to your first frame. Go to your around five frames or so and set the blur length to 100. Set a keyframe. And go to the very first. Uh, well actually, let's go ahead and change that to 200. Now let's go to the first frame and set that to 100. And we're going to get something like this. Now, uh, go to your first frame. Let's bump up the complexity a little bit. And uh, set a keyframe on your evolution. Now go to the last frame. And let's bump up the evolution. Just so we can get movement uh, while the the uh, masks move okay all right so now it's time to bring the elements we just created with trap cord mirror in these two now if you haven't set up the the keyframe is set first like i did for all of them <laughs> just go ahead and set up a few keyframes here for the offset so that way it seems like uh, they're moving up if you're using the elements i'm providing just go ahead and uh, uh you can adjust them in different ways now we have to pre-compose this and name it just form one and if you don't pre-compose it you won't be able to apply any uh, masks to it so once you pre-compose that uh, if you're using trap corner mirror if you're using the element type provider you can you can apply masks so uh add a mask and change the mask feather to 25 in the opacity where you want it to kick out and set it to zero two frames before set two keyframes a keyframe after and a keyframe before now we're gonna look for a uh, we're gonna animate the mask again so we're gonna create I'm creating a second mask that way I could just copy and paste it instead of uh, adjusting the whole thing you know for me it's easier it's faster okay and now I'm gonna set a point uh, one last time let me change it now I'm gonna set a point to feather uh, to fade this out and here, bring up our mask feather up and bring the opacity down to zero where I want it to be to fade out. Okay, so now um, we're gonna set a few keyframes for our, uh, our scale. Our scale. We're gonna scale this down where we want it to basically disappear completely. And we're gonna scale it up about three frames after. I was here just experimenting, so uh, go ahead and do the same if you like it. Then uh, you're gonna easy ease these the scale that way it has a better transition and also uh, easy ease out when you uh, your keyframe to zero on your opacity now go ahead and on the second layer we applied go ahead and apply the same steps scale it down 
and add a mask to it, add a feather, about 100 pixels or so, duplicate it, and uh, rotate it. So basically here, here's where you have to uh, throw in your, uh, I guess, your ideas. Uh, in this case, I, what I did, I was just duplicating the layers and uh, rotating them. That way, you get different movements. I applied a, a bigger, the the bigger form of uh, the the smoke here, and same same steps, opacity, two two three frames uh, before opacity down, scale it down, scale it up, and then opacity all the way to zero, and then you easy ease in. Remember, F9, easy ease. And uh, same thing, scale down. I felt this would give it a more a uh, explosion type of uh, particle, organic uh, smoke matter. Apply some masks, feather them out, and then you can also change the color on these. If you're using trapboard mirror, I would recommend changing the color. I sampled a color from his skin, and I sampled a color from his jeans. Making it, uh, giving it like a slightly more organic, more uh, uh, alive type of movement in it. Okay, so now here we run into that issue where I see the, the transition between the camera movements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that layer, um, the our main layer that we're composing on, and then create a mask and uh, on the right side feather it out about 100 pixels, and then create a mask on the left side as well feather it out as well 100 pixels and the transition happens you can hardly see it now okay so here we're gonna uh, basically we're gonna throw in a little bit of 3d compositing in here so uh, you're gonna apply uh, the, your main comp and then you're gonna throw in the big smoke element that I provided you're gonna turn them both into 3d layers now we're gonna create a new camera switch to a horizontal view and that way I get a top view, that's what we need. Now I'm gonna move my main comp back into C space and then I'm gonna scale it up. Now my smoke layer, I'm gonna move it back in C space as well. I'm gonna scale it up and try to make it fit inside my camera. Then just play around with it. You're gonna duplicate this and, and then just start rotating them, transforming them, flip them horizontal vertical so you can have different views on it. Or uh, it doesn't look the same. You can also change it on the timeline. I didn't do that just for the sake of this tutorial. And um, after you're gonna start moving each one of them on Z space so you get a different look on each one. Now go to your first frame and set a keyframe on your camera's position, go to your last frame and push it back in C-space. Now go to your effects and presets and look for the camera lens blur and apply it to your smoke layer. Blur, go to your last frame and set it up to 30 as well as set up a keyframe on it. Go to your first frame where the particle started to come out and set your blur radius to 10. Copy the same effect into each, uh, each one of the smoke layers and to start changing the blur radius on your last frame. Let's start with uh, 15, 20, 25, and 30. We're gonna get something around like this. Okay, so let's uh, bump this up one more notch and uh, go ahead and create a new adjustment layer. And let's apply a fast blur. And let's set this up to Two pixels. Okay, we're gonna name this layer CC, and we're gonna cr create a new solid, call it blue, and we're gonna change the color to a, like a darker, uh, dark blue. Bring it down under your color correction layer. Bring the opacity to 20. Control Y to create a new layer, call it vignette. Bring it above our blue layer. Let's change it to a black color bring the opacity down to zero. And uh, select the elliptical tool 
and let's go ahead and create a vignette. Now the mask feather, let's bring that up to about 200 pixels, 185 or so, and the opacity, bring it down to 50. On our color correction layer, let's bring our masking tool again and create a rectangle around uh, the main subject. Bring it out uh, to wherever you feel comfortable with. Press F on your keyboard to bring the feather and bring it up to about 200 pixels. Press Control D to duplicate the layer add a, uh, and add a curves effect. Delete the, the fast blur layer and the masking layer on your top color correction and adjust your curves to wherever you feel comfortable. Okay guys, so our final step is to turn on motion blur to all our layers. And with that, we try to sell our shot a little bit more. Now I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you guys have any suggestions, post it in the comments below. You can hit me up on Facebook or Twitter. And also, let me know what you guys would like to see featured Lee on the show. If you guys would like to see certain effects, I'll be more than glad to try to recreate the effects and show you how to do them. Thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.